Hello and welcome to the Ben Washington Baptist Church weekly online Bible study where we unlock the mysteries of God's holy word. This is where we encounter and experience the truth of God's word through the study of his word. We pray that something will be said that will encourage you in your journey with Christ. May God bless your reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. God bless you. And now, here's our lesson. Good evening, Ben Washington. This is Minister Sutton, and welcome to another edition of our Bible study. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank God and thank each of you for sharing in another uh, installment of our Bible study. It's very important to all of us that we study God's Word, and I'm so blessed today to have this privilege to be able to share God's Word with you on today. So we bless God and thank God for all of our visitors, for those of you who are peeking in to share with us in Bible study. And I just believe as minister and as the youth minister here at Ben Washington that it's very important that we study God's Word so that we can grow in our faith. Uh, we share that often and all the time with our students that that's very important as you grow in your faith is to study God's Word, not only to pray every day, but to study God's Word so that you'll know what His Word says and live and be obedient. So thank you. Uh, let us pray in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to share in your Word. Let your Word be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our pathway. And Father God, we pray that tonight's lesson will be a blessing to our lives as we continue to live and be more like you. It's in Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. Amen, saints. And today, what does it mean to be a Christian? And that's our launching pad on today. Just what is Christianity? What is a Christian? What does it mean for you to be a Christian? And a Christian is someone whose behavior and heart reflects that of Jesus Christ. Followers of Jesus were first called Christians in Antioch. And so the followers uh, and also the disciples were called Christians first again at Antioch. They were called Christians because their speech and their behavior were like Jesus Christ. I'll say that again. They were called Christians because their speech and their behavior were like Jesus Christ. And I just, just believe that if we're going to walk and grow in our faith, we have to live our faith and be more like Jesus. So today's lesson, our launching pad, is all about the origin of Christianity, how all of this got started, how our faith, and this is a, the grounds and uh, the groundwork uh, for our faith. And so because of Jesus Christ, you and I as believers, that's good news, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me, when Jesus, and when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he places something deep down on the inside, and it's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit uh, dwells in our lives as a service to the world. So when we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, we're able to go out into the world to not only make more disciples, but to be a blessing to the world, to spread the good news of the gospel. And I thank God that he chose me, and I chose him to be a blessing out into the world. And so through acts of love, through acts of justice, worship, and witness, we share God's boundless love with the world. So we're gonna be like Christ, and we're gonna live like Christ. We have to study God's word. So here today, just what does it mean to be a Christian? It was Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, verse number 28. It says, then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. And so what is a Christian? A Christian is one who has received Christ, one who belongs to Christ, one who is like Christ, and one who serves Christ. So that what is a Christian, and what it is to be an almost Christian, as Agrippa says. Well, I, Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. And to be an almost Christian is to see your need and not confess it. That's an almost Christian. And we don't want to be an almost 
Christian. We want to be a full, all in, all access Christian. So today's lesson, as we step out, the origin, uh, I want to begin this lesson with the origin of Christianity. Understand that Christianity believe, began in the first century and founded upon the teachings and ministry of a Palestinian Jew named Jesus. It arose within Judaism, but soon separated from it as Jesus interpreted the Jewish law on the basis of himself being the divine authority and fulfillment of all of its principles. Now Jesus was born around 4 BC in Bethlehem, Judea. He grew up in Nazareth, Galilee. And Jesus, y'all, he was a controversial figure. The circumstances surrounding his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and claims of deity were all scandalous within his community. His most problematic teaching centered on the coming of the long-awaited kingdom of God. This teaching, brothers and sisters, led to government conspiracies to both arrest and kill Jesus. The criminal accusations charged against Jesus were that he usurped God's authority and that he claimed to be the king of the Jews. Around A.D. 30, 33, Jesus was consequently sentenced to the capital punishment of Roman crucifixion on the grounds of blasphemy and treason. And the followers of Jesus proclaimed that he was resurrected on the third day after death and appeared to them on several occasions. And later, the Christian community known as the church made the belief in Jesus' life, his teachings, his death, his resurrection as the central core of faith and practice. And that's good news for you and I, believers. Now understand that Christianity is comprised of three major groups. The Roman Catholic Church, which has over 600 million followers. The Eastern Orthodox Church, which has over 125 million followers and the Protestant Reformation. They have over 300 million followers. So today, Christianity has over 1.4 billion followers, making it the largest religion on planet Earth. So there is enough believers to go out there and make more disciples. Now Christianity supports and says that the Creator, God, is eternal, he's transcendent, he's eminent, he's self-sufficient, he's perfect, he's holy, he's just, he's omniscient, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's immutable. So within one being that is God, there exists three co-equal and co-eternal persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And this is, brothers and sisters, the doctrine of the Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity. And this is one of the several primary principles that distinguishes Christianity from all other religions. And as far as Christians and you and I are concerned, any conscious rejection of this doctrine is kind of somewhat, I would say, put it in the kind of cultic type of uh, mindset. Because for to reject any of God is to reject all of God. So you've got to believe all of God. You just can't take parts, bits, and pieces of it. You have to believe all of what God is and who God is. And the most comprehensive way to understand the persons in God is in their relations to his work with humanity. The God, the Father, meaning God is for us. God the Son, God is with us, and the Holy Spirit, meaning God is in us. But yet all three persons are one God. Now understand, brothers and sisters, that humanity's first original religion was established by God, who was known by the name Yahweh. 
as revealed and explained in the old covenants, which is the Old Testament. Now, some scholars seem to suggest, and for the sake of classification only, refer to this as Yahwehism. Yahwehism. Now, the root of Judaism is Judah. And this is only because Judah became the dominant trial in Israel, the dominant tribe in Israel from which Christ came. And therefore, Judaism cannot be the world's first religion because the first ever religion known to humanity was Yahwehism. And this is the religion that glorifies the creator as he revealed himself to the first humans of Adam and Eve. And the principles, here are the principles to Yahwehism. They include that God exists, that he is the creator of all, that his creation is non-divine, that him being the creator reveals through general revelation and special revelation, that God the creator is revealed as many in one, one divine essence in three persons. God the creator, God created humanity in his image and his likeness. Now understand that humanity fell into sin and thus have remained unfaithful to the creator God. And the creator God judges and curses humanity due to his holiness while offering salvation due to his love and his grace. And I want to pause right there. That's good news, believers, for you and I, that while we uh, fell into sin, while we became uh, our disobedience and being separated from God, but God offered his love and his grace. And that's right there where we can give praise to God for him loving us and giving us some grace. How about that, y'all? Giving him, because when you start thinking just how bad you've been and just how good God is, that's enough to give God praise right there. Brothers and sisters, God the creator means of salvation is through faith in his promises based on his atonement. God the creator, meaning God's salvation results in him having a covenant people for himself. Now, originally that was for Israel, but God's plan extended beyond Israel. His plan was so progressive that it added people from all nations to his initial people through Christianity that sprang from Judaism. And it is essentially older than Judaism. And because of all of the principles of Yahwehism, which is older than Judaism, there are the exact principles of Christianity. And this, brothers and sisters, is another exclusive feature of Christianity, that Christianity is the continuation and completion of humanity's first and original religion. Now, whereas Judaism, back in 200 B.C., only embraces the Old Testament, Christianity completes and fulfills the Old Testament promises in the New Testament through life, teachings, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we prepare to celebrate his resurrection this coming Sunday, we thank God for the resurrection. It therefore follows that Jesus would be the fulfillment of God's covenant promises since he was the God in the flesh who made those promises. Thus, the New Testament is really not new in the sense of being original. It is new in the sense of a new life that brings as a result of fulfilling the old covenant. Brothers and sisters, that's why I like the scripture in 2 Corinthians when it says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. And we've just blessed God today for allowing us to have that opportunity to become new on the inside. 
people who believe by faith in the Lordship, the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ receive salvation. And here's what salvation encompasses. Salvation is the forgiveness of sins. How powerful is that for God to be able when we go to God and repent and ask God to forgive us for our sins. He's able to forgive us based on the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Salvation also restores our fellowship with God. Remember, our fellowship was broken because of Adam's disobedience. And now because of Jesus Christ, that relationship has been repaired. We also, because of salvation, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Also, salvation gives us eternal life with God after death. Now, believers, Christian live lifestyles that bring God glory as revealed by the teachings of the Bible, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And they are classified thus as the church. That's who we are. The church, the spiritual body of Christ in the death, in the earth, universally, locally and individually. So the church is not these four walls. The church is you. The church is all of us that is comprised that make up Ben Washington Baptist Church and all other churches who stand on the name of Jesus, who stand on that, that chief cornerstone, who stand on that solid foundation. Brothers and sisters, Christianity teaches us that those who reject the atoning work of Jesus will experience eternal punishment separated from God. That's why it's so important that each of us take on the mantle, take on the charge, take on the, the commission to share the good news. Because this is what happens when those who reject God, those who reject the atoning work of Jesus Christ, they will experience eternal punishment separated from God. But those who receive the atoning work of Jesus by faith will receive eternal life with God. And so we bless God. And as you remember on that cross, that was the one criminal who said, remember me. And Jesus right then, even on the cross, he still continued to do his father's work. And he shared with that criminal today, not tomorrow, not later on, but today you will be with me in paradise. And that's powerful, brothers and sisters. We want God to remember us. We want God to remember us and, and love us and keep us. Now, here are the Christian responses to criticism. There are some criticism. You know, with everything, there's going to be some, some criticism. There's going to be some naysayers. So Christianity is in constant contention with ethics, ethics because many people declare faith itself to be immoral. Think about that. How can you declare faith to be immoral? But there are those naysayers who say faith by itself is immoral and that faith permits illogical, unreasonable belief and or actions that possess the potential to injure us emotionally, mentally, and even physically. Now understand, brothers and sisters, that Christianity does not teach having faith that is not grounded. That would be equivalent to uh, uh, some different other cults and different other beliefs. That at times it lends itself to cult-like tendencies. So we have to have our faith that is rooted and grounded. That's what faith is. Faith is only immoral when we reduce it and limit God to the boundaries of our own human understanding. That's why the word says, lean not unto your own understanding. We can't limit God by our own uh, limited uh, understanding. And this will, because of our limited understanding, when we do that, that defeats the reality of God altogether. Or when we expand it without the grounds on God's word, 
And that's important for you and I, brothers and sisters, for our faith to be grounded, for us to be rooted as a Christian. We have to have God's word. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We need God's word every day of our lives so that we can be empowered for our own lives and so that we will be able to get out there and minister to others. Not to say what, what Clint says. We want to say what the word of God says. You want, to, you want to challenge yourself to be about your father's business, but you have to know what his word says. And that's the power of studying God's word. And to say that faith is immoral is to indirectly not believe in God altogether. And on the other hand, faith is only true and valid when grounded in God's word and exercise God's way. God gives faith and his words grounds it. God gives faith and his word grounds our faith. So when faith itself is not immoral, but our misuse of it can lead to immoral behavior. So we take faith out of the context of what it is. This can lead us to immoral behavior. Here it is in Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says that so when faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen and drop on down to verse number six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Galatians five and six for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. I've got one more for you. James chapter 2, verse number 17. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. So brothers and sisters, we have scriptures here that support our faith and what we need to be doing and what God's word says about our faith. And that's the grounds of our Christianity. The doctrine of the Trinity portrays God as a God of the family. So non-believers and naysayers says, how can he be the God of the family while consciously and voluntarily sacrificed his own son? The Bible teaches that God is the God of justice. So the naysayer says, how can this God of justice consent to have his own son to suffer injustice after being declared innocent? And how is he a God of justice in subjecting the innocent to suffering while the guilty go free? If God is the God of life, why is the cross, the instrument of death, serve as its emblem? Brothers and sisters, all of these issues highlighted are only issues when taken and isolated out of their larger context. Each issue is not an end, but a means of what God endured and or permitted to express and demonstrate the depth of his love. Then we must consider, believers, that any expression of real love demands for the one that's expressing the love to somehow turn against themselves for the sake of extending love to one another. Simply put, believers, that love in its purest form is best expressed through sacrifice and self-denial of oneself for the good or the benefit of another. It shares this, and this is, this is what it's all about. 
that Christianity offers the ultimate solution to all of humanity's problems in the golden rule. And here it is. Love ye one another as I have also loved you. That's John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35. And another version of that is love your neighbor as yourself. And as this principle is applied by all, it solves our spiritual, communal, social, and racial tensions and creates a society of people who love each other like God loves us all. What a powerful lesson. I pray that this lesson bless your life today. That's what Christianity is, is all about. You must have a solid understanding of the origins of Christian, Christianity and how it all began. And this is the foundation of who we are as believers. So I pray that you allow this lesson to bless your life, to let it marinate on you and let it bless you in such a way that you're able to get out, go out and be a blessing to someone else. God's word should motivate you and I to stand on the, the solid foundation, stand on the foundation that is laid out in our belief as Christians. God bless you all. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to share in your word. Lord, I pray that your word blesses us tonight, that we are continuing to live as you have called us to live and to be, to be all that you have called us to be, so that we may live a purpose-filled life. Bless all of those who are listening and watching this lesson, that it be a blessing to them. Bless their families. Bless all that they are going through. Bless where they are in their lives and bless where you are taking them now. It's in Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. Well, I thank you. I thank God for each of you for taking out the time. Today's lesson is about Christianity. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to the BWBC online Bible study lesson. We pray that you have been blessed.